Hello, 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 and welcome back to the channel. My name is Zach Heidi. I am a composer for media, and today I'm talking about a new score I did for Flash Gets. Now, before you actually listen to this music, I do recommend you check out the actual animation so you know what I'm talking about and what I'm actually scoring. It'll give you an idea because there's a lot of dialogue. I don't really wanna have the dialogue play through while I talk about the music. So I recommend you check that out first, then hop back over to this video so you can get a little breakdown of how I approached it on a musical level. We're just gonna go through, kind of play through, I'll talk about anything that I find noteworthy or interesting, no pun intended, and hopefully you find it interesting. If you do, you can leave a like, subscribe for more, or if you wanna support me, you can buy me a coffee in the description, which I'll mention briefly at the end of the video. So as I've chatted about before in other videos, uh, what I typically get from Flash Gits and other animators is just the animatic. And the animatic is not finished, it's just a bunch of still frames in a lot of cases, things like this. Um, but it gets the general idea across, and we're usually working with a rough voiceover. So just for reference, here's a little bit of the beginning as to how that originally sounded, and then I'll kind of show you how I approached it. I used to be a normal guy. Played sports. Had a platonic relationship with animals. My father even respected me. I've been an anime fan for three days now. Or an abnormal, as me and my friends used to call them. So that's kind of what it looks like in the beginning, you know? And what's really tricky about this is you have to recognize that it's going to get better. Sometimes when you're working with this stuff, you're tempted to kind of underscore or keep it sparse because it looks like it's unpolished and you almost don't want to overshadow anything. But I've always been surprised because uh, if I do that with the music, then I see the finished animation, I'm like, oh crap, I have to make this better because the animation looks insane. So now I try and use my imagination... Now I try and use my imagination as much as possible to try and kind of fill in the gaps and anticipate what it's going to look like in the end. So let me just walk you through the approach. What I thought would be cool is most of this is a montage and it's kind of like uh, the elapsing of time. And to connect it all together, I wanted to have a piece of music that could be fluid all the way through. So not a lot of like trying to hit different hit points, more just like creating a sad melody that kind of tells the story of this character and taking it super seriously too. So here's what I did in the beginning. I used to be a normal guy, played sports, had a platonic relationship with animals. My father even respected me. Kind of like an art film. I've been an anime fan for three days now. Or an abnormal, as me and my friends used to call them. <sighs> now look at us. Bryce was the first to fall, taken in by the allure of hentai. He used to be the all-star. So that's, the, that's kind of the whole beginning. It's just basically an intro. Started off with some piano, some like high sustained strings. And wanted to hit this moment. Ray <laughs> looks up. Cut there, and then we have some solo strings. I really like where that chord ends. So originally I actually had it ending kind of just like E minor, but I wanted to add this six in there. So it's like a C sharp. It just kind of has a bit of a, an enigmatic feeling to it. A little bit of mystery. Right before we kind of get the harp and we get our main melody, which I'll play now. So that's the main melody there, and I wanted it to really be clear that this was a sad melody, which is why I worked with a descending pattern. You know, when we think of sadness, we think of like, uh, somebody sighing, it falls, you know? We don't have rising motion representing sadness. That would be very strange. So the way I did that was have the, the chords kind of move down. Pretty simple and straightforward. And the melody, again, is kind of like innocent, childlike, like a music box. It 
it's actually almost a little bit predictable in a way. And hopefully that's intentional. I mean, that's kind of what I tried to do is make it feel like really overtly sad. Um, just really lay into the comedic aspect of the fact that this is really funny animation, but it has to feel sad. In terms of the arrangement, I kept it pretty straightforward. It's just a Celeste and a harp for the beginning with some string sustains. And when we have little gaps in the melody, I try and fill that in with some little counter melody. So here's the flute. And then same here with the violins. Then the clarinet takes it, almost like it's getting older. Little gap. So I have a little piano gap. Okay, so that part, <laughs> it's just absurd. So that part I wanted to really lay in that it was tragic, you know, even though obviously the image is, is hysterical. Um, so I wanted to have that cello come back. So it's just kind of an A minor chord, so. Just some little gesture. I thought that would be kind of funny and keep the story moving forward instead of landing on like an E minor which would end the story. I wanna keep the story moving. Then we're gonna move into something where he kind of reminisces on being a kid or being, not being a kid, but, but you know, his better days when he wasn't obsessed with anime. And so we have something kind of magical and childlike kind of burst out of this. So just a moment, and then it settles back in. That's pretty much just futzing around with having some chugging strings and whatnot, if you listen to that. It's just kind of like chaos. With some low brass. and then just immediately switch back. It's like part two. So there I had an English horn take the melody. So we've had flute take it in the beginning, then clarinet, then English horn, and then finally we're gonna get French horn. Uh, and I think it was just intuitive why I did that, but it does sort of feel like something's getting older in a way because the flute represents like the most innocent state. And actually we started with Celeste before that. So Celeste, flute, clarinet, English horn, French horn. <laughs> so it almost kind of ages as it goes on. And I think that that kind of helps this. It represents like the passage of time, somebody getting older or more weary, however you want to look at it. There's also a little bit of counter melody going on in here. Here's everything but the melody, so you can see what's happening. And then with French horn. So I wanted one final kind of sigh, and I was kind of trying to imitate a little bit of like Schindler's List in here, some like klezmer music, um, to feel really just tragic and just lay into the comedic aspect of this and how ridiculous it is. So you have kind of a little which is very expressive, you know, um, and a big kind of uh, virtuosic string run that leads into it. So here's that string run. Along with that, uh, you got cello and the melody. So there's a lot of movement and stuff happening in here, um, which is a little harder sometimes to actually figure out how you're going to approach that, uh, but can yield some pretty cool results if you're patient with how you actually do this. And then 
and here's our big ending. Now, in the original, that actually hard cuts, meaning that instead of that reverb, it just goes and it just cuts right out for the comedic aspect. If you refer to the original animation, you'll see that that's a point where there's some dialogue that happens, a little last punchline. And sometimes it's funny if the music just hard cuts and you don't even have the reverb. It makes you feel like everything's just broken, like all that emotion is just sucked right out. And it can be kind of funny when you do that. Um, the approach I had for the ending, because the ending was actually more intense in terms of the musicality than the rest of the piece was I actually did a piano sketch, which I don't have, I think I deleted it. But just to show you how I approached it, um, I actually worked out on the piano, this kind of idea. You know. I literally played in an idea like that and then would orchestrate that sort of thing. So it helps because you set a little framework for yourself instead of trying to do it all from scratch. You can give yourself something. You don't have to work that way. Another way that I work sometimes is just trying to get the basic gestures in. So if I know like I definitely want this to be a string thing, I'll work in like a string pad and then kind of orchestrate out. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's about what sounds best and works best for your process. So everybody has a different approach with that. But I'll kind of isolate the ending because I think it's the most interesting and the most intense. So here's the strings at the end. Sorry about that. Here's the strings at the end. Big ending. Now this isn't perfectly orchestrated. If I was really giving this to live players, I would give them more activity that's going on on the top here. I'd make sure that these are separated properly so we're not having too many notes. Um, but again, this is just a mock-up, so it's just about how it sounds at the end. Um, now in that beginning section, the winds basically and the brass take on the upper portion. So here's the winds for this. And then they finish off with a little trill. So the strings and the winds together now, so you can hear how they interact. See the winds fill in that middle line. Okay, now here's the brass on its own, because the brass is pretty much doing this whole thing, more or less. They cut for the strings. Wanted to have that last note not be resolved because it'd be funnier for the cut. Um, so here's the, let's do the percussion and the choir, and then I'll play it all together one more time so you can hear it. So here is percussion and choir. Choir's just doing sustain, so that's nothing I need to isolate. Okay, and you'll hear the piano in there is kind of also supporting the uh, winds. It's actually the original idea I played in was the piano, uh, but I wanted it quieter. Um, I don't like when stuff's too piano dominant, actually, ironically, even though I'm a pianist, so. Just 
just a little punctuation for that. So again, everything together. And like you'll notice that when I'm isolating these sections, they don't sound phenomenal on their own. Um, that's because I don't work as hard as I used to on those individual sections if they're not going to be isolated in the first place. Again, it's about how the whole thing sounds as a unit. So for time's sake, you know, I try to focus my energy on what matters most and not be so perfectionistic about all those inner details um, because I don't have the time to be <laughs> anymore. So here is that ending section one more time. And there you have it, folks. I hope you found this interesting, useful, informative, fun, whatever you found it. If you enjoyed that, I'm gonna be uploading the music only so you can check that out as well. And if you enjoyed this content and you wanna see more stuff like this, then you can leave a like, subscribe for more. And if you really wanna support me, you can buy me a coffee in the video description because I like coffee and it helps me make music. So thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.